Western Australia is such a huge state. We're heading into the wide open spaces of the Murchison in Western Australia in search of isolated campsites, endless blue skies and zillions of stars. We're at Chinaman's Rock in Western Australia. We're halfway between Yelgu and Kew. We're in the Murchison of Western Australia. There are heaps of rain, and it's just absolutely beautiful day in a beautiful spot in a beautiful area. Chinaman Rock is one of the many large granite rock domes found here in what's known as the Yulgun Kraton, which extends over about 650,000 square kilometres of Western Australia. This is Australia's largest granitic area and is one of the oldest landscapes in the world. The tops of these rocks are covered in small waterholes known as Nama. Since we've had rain recently, there's quite a few that are filled with water. Nama holes were one of the main sources of water for the Aboriginal people living around here in times gone past. In the late 1800s they were used as water sources by pastoral explorers and then gold prospectors. These days they are a great source of water for local animals. Kangaroos have no problem bouncing up here for an evening sip. After a beautiful night camping, we picked up and headed north towards Kew. No other vehicles in sight, all we could see is blue sky and rich red earth. So we are not far down the road from Chinaman's Rock and we've come across this place. It's called Pindathuna Creek. There's been a fair bit of rain around the last few weeks. Uh, and all this area of the creek, which is really rocky, uh, is filled with all these water holes. So the place is buzzing, there's insects everywhere and birds in the background. Pindathuna Creek was a random find and we decided to have a swim. The water was a tad chilly, but that tingling feeling you get on your skin afterwards is well worth it. Our next stop was a random find set on a hill amongst granite boulders. What a sensational spot to admire the view and soak up the warm rays of the sun. One of the cool things I like about Western Australia is there's so many cool spots to find. That's if you know where to look. So tonight we're having chicken sausages, but we're going to do some healthy sweet potato first and a little bit of zucchini as well. Let's see how we go. Chicken snags. This is quite the Aussie barbecue, isn't it? Beautiful sunset, snags, veggies.
absolutely beautiful night. A zillion stars out, a little bit cool, but it's brekkie time now. Just cook it over the open fire, the only way to go. So much to see just by walking around the rocks, watching the natural flow of groundwater that look like small little springs, and of course climbing all the boulders like the big kids we are. I'm pretty short so I needed a leg up to climb some of them. One wonders how these boulders got here and how old some of them are. They reminded us a little bit of the Devil's Marbles, which were formed by gradual weathering of the sandstone and clay surrounding the granite allowing many of the rocks to be precariously balanced on top of each other, just like these ones are. The colours of the surrounding breakaway rock change slowly as the sun sets, with the reds and oranges growing more vivid and the whites jumping out. Walga Rock, a mini version of Ayers Rock, Western Australia's best kept secret. Walga Rock is one of Australia's largest monoliths. It was once a meeting place for Aboriginal people from all over the area. The rock is actually located on a private station but it's open for tourist viewing and you can walk or drive right around the base. There are lots of Aboriginal paintings on the rock. It's said to be the largest gallery of Aboriginal paintings in Australia. The most unusual of these paintings is a sailing ship in white ochre with masts, rigging and portholes. Why on earth a painting of a white ship exists over 300 kilometres inland from the sea remains a mystery and debates about its origin and meaning still rage hot today. The other paintings include snakes, emus, kangaroos, footprints and boomerangs. Radiocarbon test dates the gallery right back to 10,000 years old. views from the top are spectacular. We even spotted a kangaroo hopping along the top. We spent the best part of the day here experiencing the rock in the morning and afternoon lights. 
admiring the way the shadows move throughout the day. every corner there was something new and amazing to see and taste. I certainly got lots of exercise this day. I think I climbed up and down three separate sections and walked along most of the top. The lure of the top was too hard to resist. It was almost like a big magnet was drawing me up there and that my energy supply was being renewed by all the fresh clean air and warm sun. I made a short stop at the gold mining town of Big Bell. Well, it's a ghost town these days. Like any good Aussie town, there was always at least one pub and this Art Deco beauty was built to last. It was reported to have the longest bar in Australia in its day. It's a pity the bartender wasn't there, the beer would have gone down well. The town had a theatre, shops, a school, a church and even a hospital and train station. About 850 people lived here in its prime and between 1937 and 1955 around 730,000 ounces of gold was produced. The mine was sold in 1955 and the town was then sadly deserted. You can still see quite a few structures partially intact. Imagine on a cold inland outback night sitting by those roaring fires and listening to the hum of the big bell town all around. It's really thought provoking to wander around the streets and contemplate what the thriving town was like in its heyday. There are plenty of historical pictures signposted to stir the imagination. The nearby town of Kew was the administration centre for this area during the gold rush. It's famously known as the Queen of the Murchison. At its peak, Kew had a population of around 10,000 people and had a whopping 11 pubs and 13 hotels. We Aussies do of course love our beer. After the war, many of the mines did not reopen. Adding to that the Great Depression and the fall in gold prices, the population fell back to around 500. The town still has some beautiful buildings intact, constructed from the limestone that was quarried from the local area. 
In the middle of the very wide street is a little rotunda, which marks the site of the first well sunk in the town. Our campsite was magic, a grassy green patch surrounded by trees located right at the foot of another large red granite monolith. We spent two nights here. In 48 hours only two cars went past. What's for dinner tonight Deb? Oh well, um, a couple of days ago I marinated a bunch of chicken breast. So um, a bit of a mix of garlic and some veggies and some of my favourite smoky sauce in there. So I'm going to cook that on the barbie plate and then what we're going to have it with is uh, we're just going to do a bit of a fry up of some onion and also some chopped up zucchini and tomato and some herbs and spices in there. Alrighty, I haven't used this marinade before, I just kind of, whoops, made it up. So let's see how I go. Cheers. Cheers, baby. Mm -mm. Can I have some tomato sauce with it? Oh, okay. oh yeah. <laughs> and what day is it? Who cares? Exactly. Next morning we go for an explore over the rock and check out the many nama holes filled with fresh water again. Not a cloud in the sky, but the wind was up. This big rock we found has all these little water holes everywhere so we're just going to scoop some out and we're going to take it back and warm the water up and then I'm going to have a shave. Just warm up my water. Beautiful or ready for another five days. The wildflowers are starting to spring up. They look amazing against the endless blue sky and the bright sunshine.
sitting on top of the rock watching the spectacular sunset again with the full moon rising out the east was a great way to end the day. We spent our final night camping by the Murchison River, just a few kilometres away from the settlement of Murchison. The eucalypt trees out here are striking with their vivid white smooth trunks, very Australian. The river flows all the way to the coastal town of Kalbarri. Dry for much of the year, the river was flowing for us, sparkling and clear, which was just perfect for a quick swim, not bad, giving it's in the middle of winter. shared the river with a ray of wildlife including three black swans. Here we are on the Murchison River and I got up in the middle of the night, wouldn't have a clue what the time is and I had to go and water a tree and I looked up and I said to Deb, hey, someone's taken a chunk out of the moon. And then she had a look, and then we came to the conclusion that it must be a lunar eclipse. That's where the planet gets between the moon and the sun and leaves a shadow on the moon. These cute little hooded plovers were running around on the sand picking up bugs. Willy wagtails were going about their business as well. The swallows, whose reflections seemed to dance on the mirrored surface of the river beneath, were busy looking after the nests that hung underneath the riverbank edge. In the last seven days, we've done some amazing camping. 
all the spots we camped at were isolated. In fact, one spot we had two vehicles pass by the dirt road in 48 hours. No mobile reception. A zillion stars every night, clear blue skies during the day. Full moons just about at night. And in fact, last night I was lucky enough to film the lunar eclipse by accident. Western Australia is just one big place.